start the class and um, um, okay, so we, we, we were talking about conservation of energy and if there is no friction and uh, oh, by the way, I forgot to show you this picture. I remember when we talked about conservation of momentum and you see here it's a um, watermelon, something like this. You have a bullet here. So someone shot a bullet here and you see that some stuff coming from the back. Okay, so conservation of momentum is, um, is happening here. Just wanted to show you this picture. Okay, so we, we stopped here. So conservation of uh, mechanical momentum, it says that the total potential energy before, so it could be gravitational plus elastic, plus kinetic energy before will be equals to the total potential energy after. So after I'm gonna put a prime to say that it's after, plus kinetic energy after. So this is called conservation of mechanical energy. And that works only if there is no friction and no work done by your external force, okay? Now, if you have work done by an external force, then you will have to add here something because you put energy into the system. If there is friction, then here you have a minus because you are taking away what you begin with. But we're gonna see that next. Okay, let's do this one quickly. It's easy. It starts with kinetic energy and it ends up with uh, potential energy. <clears throat> so those, those problems are very easy. Because there is no vector, okay, there is no direction to worry about. It's even easier than uh, conservation of momentum. Conservation of momentum, you have to be careful if it's moving to the right or to the left. For conservation of energy, everything is scalar. We don't have to worry about negative sign uh, with the velocity. Okay, so it starts here in your hand and it has a velocity of 20 meter per second. At the top, of course, it's going to stop because gravity is like doing negative work. It's going to slow it down and they want to find the height. So it's very easy, right? So to begin with, oh, 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 oh. And we have to decide where is your potential energy equals to zero. Because potential energy always depends on your reference level. So where do you decide that potential energy is going to be zero? Of course, it's going to be easier if you take it in, in your hand, at the level of your hand. Okay? And uh, here, you see potential energy here is going to be mgh. Uh, kinetic energy is zero because it stopped moving. And here, uh, kinetic energy is 0 0.5 m initial velocity square. Okay, so what do you find? So conservation of energy, don't erase your memory over the weekend. So 0 0.5, the mass, the velocity it's starting with, so 0, uh, 20 squared equals m, the mass, g, uh, h. And you are solving for h, okay? So it's very easy, right? You cross out the mass, and we are not surprised because remember, when anything is in free fall, the mass does not matter unless, unless you have a resistance. So you can uh, uh, solve for H, right? So what do you get? Uh, 1.2? Hmm? 1.2? You sure? Maybe I did a mistake over, over 10. So H 
equals 0 0.5 400 divided by 10. Oh, tw tw 20, 20. Do you agree? Yes. So let's review kinematics. We, we could have done the same thing using, remember the kinematic equation, B final square equals initial square plus two times the accel uh, acceleration times the displacement delta H. Remember that? So between here and there, the final speed is zero equals initial speed square plus two times acceleration is negative 10. Delta, a, uh, delta Y is your displacement, which is also equals to the height. So you see, height equals 20 squared divided by 20, which is 20 meters. Okay, you see, you see how it works? I could also have used the work um, energy theorem that says that the net work okay, equals the change in kinetic energy. Okay, it's the same thing. We are talking about the same things, different approaches. So the net work, the only force acting is gravity. Gravity is doing what? Positive work or negative work? Negative work, very good, because it's trying to slow it down. So I'm going to put minus mgh equals change in kinetic energy is going to be negative because uh, it's going to slow down. So at the top, final is zero minus initial square. And again, you find 20 meters. Okay, so you have three ways to get the same thing. Okay. So remember that the change in kinetic energy is 0 0.5 m, and then you have a parenthesis here, square minus initial square. So for any science that you are taking, remember a change means final minus initial. Um, okay, let's do that, Dardeville. Do I say it right? Do you say Dardeville or Dardeville? Dardeville. Dardeville? Dardeville? Huh? Oh, Daredevil. Oh, Daredevil. <laughs> oh, that's why, because it's like a devil that is daring. Oh, Daredevil. See, I, I discovered something today. Daredevil. Okay, because in French we used to call that uh, Dardeville, but no, it's Dear Jivel, okay. Okay. And um, because it was like a hero, right? Dear Dar Devil, like a. Well, anyway, let's go back to physics. <laughs> let's stick to physics because if I take tangent, uh, that's not good. Okay, so you see. But this is a projectile motion. There is no air resistance. And if we use our kinematic equation, it's not going to be that easy because we have to use the X component, which stays the same. And then we have to find the Y component, okay? Using the, the equation of kinematics, the final square, blah, blah, blah. And then you have to use Pythagorean theorem. So it's a lot of steps. Instead, now we have a new tool. We can use the conservation of momentum, uh, no, energy. So let's simplify things. And I can say that the potential energy equals zero here. I can do that. It, it's going to be easier. OK, and it has a speed. So kinetic energy equals 0 0.5 mv squared. That's what you want to find. And then to begin with here, it does have kinetic energy. Okay, so here kinetic, kinetic energy equals 0 0.5 m 
V square and it has potential energy between here and there, right? That will be H. M G H. Okay, so now to solve for the speed here, all you have to do is to apply conservation of uh, energy. Right? To do it, to don't don't stare. Just do it. Total energy before equals total energy after. I'm gonna put a prime here. And you see that I decide that that's level zero. So that way, what's gonna be the height here? This is, uh, no, no, 35, right? You could take 70, but then you will have to start from here, right? So it's easier if you take just here. You, you can do whatever you want. You, you can take the potential energy to be zero wherever it's more convenient for your computations. So it makes the computation easier if you take the height equal zero here. It's up to you, you can do that. And I will show you after if you don't do that, what it means. But let's do that. Let's do the easier first. So 0 0.5 M 38 square plus relative to here, potential energy is M G 35 equals no potential energy here plus 0 0.5 mv square. You see the mass cancel out and we are not surprised because it's in a free fall, it's a projectile motion. Mass does not matter, does not matter. And you can solve for v square. So 0 0.5 v square equals 0 0.5 38 square plus 10 and 35. You can even uh, multiply by two here, everything, or you can solve. If I multiply by two everything, I'm gonna get something like this. Just for fun. 0 0.5 is one half, but you don't have to, and you get and you get don't forget to take the square root, so you do 38 square plus. Or you do 0 0.5 times 38 square and tau plus 10 times 35. And then you have to divide by 0 0.5 and then you take the square root. Six. Yes, 46.2. What is it? Mm -hmm. You don't get that? You do 38 square and tau times 0 0.5 and tau plus 10 times 35 and tau. You divide by 0 0.5 and tau and you take the square root. Everyone? All on board? Okay, so you, you might ask, okay, so what happens if you take the potential energy equals zero here? You will still get the same answer, but it will take uh, more computation because if you take potential energy equals zero here at the beginning, it's gonna have mg70, okay, plus 0 0.5 m38 uh, square. At the end, it's gonna be mg. 35 plus 0 0.5 mv square. So you will get the same thing because that term goes on the other side and you do 70 minus 35, but it takes more steps, but you will get the same answer. Um, the idea is to decide where is the potential energy equals to zero. Is that clear? Uh, we, we used to do it in a different way, projectile motion. We used to have, you see, you have the final velocity here, the final velocity here. 
46.5. You see, it has two components. So we review for the final sheet. It has two components, X component, which is 38, and it has a Y component. And how can we find the Y component? Then you can use this uh, um, two times acceleration times theta y. So remember from projectile motion. So you see it takes more steps if you want to connect the dots. Yeah. If you use the the feather height assembly, can you still yes. cancel out all the masses? Yes. Okay. You go bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. That term goes on the other side. So you're gonna have G seventy minus thirty five is thirty five plus zero point five thirty eight square equals zero point five mb square. So you get the same thing. Just one more step. Okay. So what else? Okay. So here it's interesting because well, we we are not going to talk about the trampoline. But you see, it starts with what kind of energy does it have when the trampoline is bent? Very good, elastic, right? So it's elastic potential energy. And remember, there will be a restoring force. And when the restoring force are involved, the potential energy is conserved. You always get back that energy. So energy is stored in, in the trampoline. And then all that energy goes to kinetic, and then from kinetic, it goes to potential. Okay, so try to answer the question. It's not that hard, it's just uh, when, when you have a physics problem, you always um, do the drawing and try to label everything. So you see, it says the maximum height, so we have to be careful with the height, is 4.8 meters. And then the height of the trampoline here is 1.2 meters. Uh, okay, what's the initial speed? So just after it leaves the trampoline. So the only thing hard is to decide where is your potential energy equals to zero. And then once you have decided, you stick to it. So either you take it here, okay, or either you take it there. Okay, can you do it? So if, if you take it here, potential energy, so then you will have to use the 4.8, 1.2. I'm, I'm gonna simplify my work. I'm gonna decide that potential energy equals zero here, okay? Do you agree? So in that case, the height here will be 4.8 minus 1.2. So that will be the displacement if you want. So that's going to be uh, 3.6. Is that 3.6? Right? Yeah. Okay. So okay. what's your name again? Giselle. Hmm? Giselle. Giselle. So 1.2. Yes. So before, so you have, before it has no potential energy, so it has only kinetic energy equals mg. At the top, there is no kinetic energy and the height is uh, 3.6. Okay, do you agree? Or if you want to take the potential energy to be zero here, so then you will have to say mg 1.20 plus no kinetic energy, oh yes, kinetic energy, so 0 0.5 mv squared equals mg 4.8 plus zero. So it's very important that you decide where is your potential energy to be zero, okay? And boom, and boom, and what do you get?
I'm just assuming that the final velocity is zero. Y yeah. It's, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Right? Are we good? And you will find the, the same answer. And, and you see, it's always the same equation. It's a square root V equals square root of 2GH. When there is only kinetic on one side, potential, gravitational potential energy on the other side. So the answer is 8.4. Okay? So the, the way they did it, it's a different approach. They just say that the work done by gravity, it's going to be negative. Okay, and equals to the change in kinetic energy. But it doesn't matter, you get the same thing. Okay, jumping here, what's going to be the speed at uh, five meters above, above the water? So you have two ways to do it. I think the easiest way is to take potential energy zero here. Right. You can also solve that with kinematics. So here, that's, that will be my final. You, you can decide where is your final situation. And here, it's going to be my initial. So final situation, I'm going to decide that this is PE equals zero. That way it's going to simplify my computation. You do have kinetic energy. That will be 0 0.5 mv square. Initial, uh, it's drops. He, he, looks like a he. Drops. So it's kinetic energy equals zero. Potential energy relative to here. It's going to be mg and five. Okay? So the point of those problems is to decide where is potential energy equals zero if you want to simplify your uh, computation. Yes? Okay, so it's, you see it's easy. Just square root of 2g5. Uh, same, same as before. With what speed? The, 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 he's going to heat the water. Instead of having five, you're going to have 10. Any question? It's good? Yeah? Sorry. So the answer is 9.9. .9. Right? Potential to kinetic. And you decide that potential is zero here. Okay? Is that clear? Same thing as kinetics. Uh, no, kinematics. Vf square equals V initial square plus two times GH. Okay, so let's do this one. Uh, you want to find the speed where it goes the fastest. So first of all, where do you think it's going the fastest? Huh? Yeah, here at the bottom, right? Right? Yeah. Okay, because it's falling the most height. All that potential energy here get to kinetic energy. Now, what is doing the work is gravity. And you remember, gravity is a conservative force. So the path taken from situation one to situation two does not matter. What matters is initial condition, final condition. What happened in between, we don't care. I can go this way, up, 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 chi, 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 cho, 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 and go back here. What matters is the initial situation and the final situation, okay? So do it. Don't fall asleep. See, I see people falling asleep. Get a coffee. So um, you. So here it's up to you. You can take potential energy to be zero here, or you can take potential energy to be zero there. 
it does not matter. What matters is that this is the initial position and here that will be the final. Here there is no speed and, and here you have a speed here. Okay? Everyone is doing it. You can help each other, talk to each other. So it's a roller coaster physics. No, no, no. Zoom, because all that potential energy goes into kinetic energy. So it's not zero, right? It doesn't stop unless there is friction. All that potential energy. So actually, it's a good question because it doesn't matter if. If you go on the roller coaster or, or if you just fall, if you are in free fall, falling here, here, that will be very bad for you, but actually it will be the same speed. So it doesn't matter if it goes this way, get to here, or if it goes from here to there, because the only force acting on it is gravity. Gravity is conservative. It does not matter which way it goes to get to the final position. Okay? Is that clear? So if, if it was to fall straight down in free fall, it will have exactly the same speed. Of course, it's not the same velocity because this one is down and this one is in this direction. So the direction will not be the same, but the speed will be the same. Okay? Is that clear? So you have different way to do it. You can say, let's say I take potential energy to be zero here at the ground level. Okay, so before it's gonna have potential energy, it's gonna be M G 50 plus no kinetic energy equals final potential energy. I'm still five meters above the ground. You can do that, M G five, if you take potential energy to be zero at the ground level, plus 0 0.5 mv squared. Is that clear? If you take potential energy to be zero, it's fine. You're going to have 45. So it's going to be a, a boom, boom, and boom. This goes on the other side. So it's going to be g45 equals 0 0.5 v square. Okay, so we get again the same equation, two and then g, and then the height it fell, it's just 45. You see, if you use that equation here, it's what's, what's the height it fell? Is that clear? Okay, and what do you get? I don't know. Okay. 30. So it doesn't matter if you are in free fall, you go zoom, or if you go all the way, if there is no friction, the final speed will be the same. Not, not, the, not the direction though. Because once you hit the once you hit the ground, it's it's gonna hurt a lot because it's not the fall that kills, it's the landing. Okay, so, so far we didn't talk about what's happening to the equation, okay? If you have friction or if you're doing work, like if you put energy in the system, because those forces like first, like an engine of friction are not conservative. So we have to change the equation. Okay, so now we have to change the equation. We have to begin with, let's say that's your reservoir you begin with. So some of it is gonna be kinetic, okay? Some of it is gonna be potential. So before, before we saw that that's just mechanical energy. So at the end, you can have more kinetic. 
you can have uh, less potential. Okay, so this is potential and this is kinetic, but you see the level here does not change. Okay, it's changing just the form of energy, right? But now we take that same reservoir of energy. Okay, so maybe you're going to have some uh, kinetic here, some potential, but now you add. Okay, so how do you add energy by you doing work on it? Okay, so you, you add energy. Okay, so at the end, how much energy you're gonna get? It's like a beaker, right? You put you put a liquid inside. So that's at the end, that's at the beginning. So now we're gonna have potential energy to begin with, plus kinetic energy to begin with plus the energy you add to your system. So that will be work done by you on the system, okay? It's positive work will be equals to potential energy after plus kinetic energy after. Okay, so we just uh, uh, modify this uh, equation. Is that clear? So it's like you have a beaker, and then you add stuff in it. Or you can do the opposite. You can take away energy because of friction. So you can have potential energy before plus kinetic energy before minus the work done by friction will be equals to potential energy after plus kinetic energy after. So you are stealing energy from the system. So the system is losing energy, like the simulation I show you. So let's let's do this one. So here you have a thrust. So not only do you have kinetic energy to begin with, but you have you burning fuel. Okay. So because you're burning fuel, there is a thrust doing work on the rocket. So you add energy to your system. And then it's going to use that energy and then it's going to go higher. So you, you take your beaker, you have some potential energy and kinetic energy. No, no kinetic energy here, just potential energy to begin with. And you add energy in. Can you try to do it? Uh, so I find it more convenient to take potential energy equals zero here. And it has some kinetic energy. No, it does not have kinetic energy. But you're doing work. Okay, so it means you add energy. So that's uh, initial. And that's going to be final. Does it have energy at the end? Yes, it has kinetic energy. And it has potential energy. So from here, Mg29. Do you understand? So not only you have mechanical energy, but you add energy to the system. So it's like uh, putting money in the account. Add money. Okay, so what do you get? So uh, to begin with, you have zero potential plus zero kinetic plus you add energy. What is that energy comes from? From the fuel, from a chemical potential energy that is released, TNT, whatever, you know, here. So you have potential inside. E equals final will be kinetic energy uh, plus plus mg twenty nine. Yes, thank you. I was spacing out. You unstep me. <laughs> okay. 
No, that's the thing. You cannot you cannot uh, cancel the masses. That's very good because um, you you add you add hmm? because the mass is gonna matter if it's something light or something heavy, right? The 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 effect of the energy you add will not have the same effect. So when there is no addition of external energy. So when you do not do work, uh, if there is no friction or, or resistance, you can sell the M when you don't see M. Do you see a M here? So that's pure energy. So it means you have your beaker here and you add energy for 25. Okay, you add energy from burning the fuel. So at the end, you're going to have all that energy. Some of it is going to be turned into a potential. Some of it will be turned into a kinetic. But you see the level here stays the same. But there is no mass, so you cannot cancel out. OK, so 425 equals 0 0.5. The mass, how much is the mass to the given mass? I'm cheating. Zero point twenty. So the mass is zero point twenty. So it's gonna be uh, two hundred grams. The mass. So zero point twenty times the speed square plus zero point twenty times ten times twenty nine. Okay. Is that right? 0 0.20. For the equation, it has to be in kilograms, right? So yes, it has to be in kilograms. Um, that's the mass. OK, everyone, you are on board. And how much do you have? Sixty point five, yes, very good. Sixty one. Okay. So the if if now if now you are losing because of friction, instead of having a plus, you're gonna have a minus. Okay, because you still start with a reservoir, and now you are taking away energy. So if there is a resistance, if there is friction. You are taking away because work is doing negative work. Are G stands for gravity correct? Uh, yes. Why wouldn't it be negative? Uh, Will it be negative? Why? R10 shouldn't be negative then? No, 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 not not uh, when you write down conservation of energy. There is you 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 do use negative ten when you are using kinematics, but in that case, no, it's all in magnitude. Okay, so potential energy relative to here, it's positive. So that's why you take uh, 10. It's like you forget that 10 is gravity. It's just part of the potential energy. You want the potential energy to be zero. Yes? Okay, so it says now, if you have friction or air resistance, it's taking away energy from the system. So now the equation will be potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial minus the work done by friction equals potential energy final plus kinetic energy final. So in that case, friction is taking away energy. Okay, it's not, not hard to understand. Okay, so let's talk about power. So if we both uh, go to the top of Empire, if I, if I race with a student, we have the same mass and we go to the same height, Empire State Building, say, 
it will take me like three days, it will take you like a few minutes. The record for Empire State Building is about 10 minutes to go all the way up. No elevator, of course. So we have the same mass and we go up. We, will, will, will we use the same amount of energy if we have the same mass? Yes, because potential energy equals mgh. Do you agree with me? Potential energy only depends on the mass. Gravity is doing work against you, so you have to um, fight gravity. Okay, that, that's why if you go in space, you don't feel gravity anymore. You feel weightless, so you're gonna lose your bones and you use your muscle. So gravity is good because we are always doing work, working out. Okay, so but what will be different between you and me? We have the same mass. It takes me three days. It takes you ten minutes. What will be the difference? Don't don't sleep. So the work is the same because the work will be against gravity, right? So the the work done against gravity is mgh. What's going to be the difference between you and me? It takes me. Time, the time, the time, you will be more faster, okay? So work, when you talk about work, there is no time inside. There is force and distance. However, if you want to include the time, then you're going to talk about how fast energy is uh, produced or consumed. That's going to be the power. So if for the same amount of uh, gasoline, if you take a Ferrari or if you take a Ford Escort, of course the Ferrari has more power, which means it's gonna consume more gasoline per second. So it will have more punch, more oomph, boom, boom. Là. We see a lot of them, or, or uh, Ferrari, or uh, uh, what are all those uh, fancy cars, they have a lot of oomph, right? So that will be power. So we define power as the rate at which energy is consumed or produced. So it's gonna be the work. Work is energy is in transfer divided by the time, okay? Horsepower, for example, is also a unit of power, uh, of, uh, power horsepower. Like uh, Ferrari has like 200 horsepower, my Hyundai, which is a very small car, not even 100, okay? So you see the difference. So what is work is the change in energy over time. So this is in joule, this is in second. The unit for power is watt, named after James Watt. James Watt was uh, trying to improve the efficiency, uh, efficiency of the machine, steam, steam engine in the 19th century. So it's named after him. So you know the joke, you know, it's what, it's what, it's what, it's what, it's what, what, what. Okay, so anyway, stupid joke. So the unit for power is what? Okay, and that will be the average uh, power. Okay, so let's take an example, an easy example. A car stop. So if it stop, it means it's it's uh, changing its speed. So that means there is a change in kinetic energy. That means work has been done. Okay, so the work done equals the change in kinetic energy. So it has been done by the brake. So 40,000 joule is lost. By the car, it has lost kinetic energy. Okay, calculate the power. You just have to, uh, huh? what did you say? Divide. You divide, very good. Power will be the change in kinetic energy or the change in energy divided by the time elapsed. So 40, one, two, three, divided by five. You see how easy it is? Is that eight? Eight thousand watt. 
capital capital letter uppercase uppercase and usually we write down kilo so it's going to be eight kilo watt eight kilo watt okay okay so it's easy uh, some uh, some uh, example in the real life uh, running 1340 watts, skiing, biking, sleeping. Even when you are sleeping, you are losing energy. I guess, like you learned that in biology. Okay, here is an example, uh, interesting example. In one food calorie, so food calorie is uh, a unit for energy. One food calorie, and don't confuse, don't confuse chemistry calorie and food calorie. One chemistry calorie, okay, is about four joule, and one food calorie has an uppercase is about four thousand joule. So one food calorie is a thousand chemistry calorie. Do you agree? Okay. So let's take the old uh, light bulb. Don't don't fall asleep. People are so tired. I don't know why. But don't fall asleep here. You, you remember those incandescent uh, light bulbs that we used to have before they decide to phase them out? Okay. It, what, was it, uh, it, let's say, 100 watts? What, was it okay to touch it with your hand? No, you, we used to take like um rag. Exactly. Not to burn your hands, right? And that means it's losing energy in the form of radiation at the rate of 100 joule per second so every second is losing 100 joule is that clear so it will be invisible light but also infrared so that's why they were not happy you know you are losing a lot of energy into heat but actually it was a good thing to have infrared because actually we need uh, infrared did you know that we need infrared so if you take a biology class, maybe they will explain to you that we need infrared to improve our mitochondria. We need infrared, we need the sun. So anyway, that's a tangent, sorry. Turns out that we, human, okay, on average, we also lose the same amount of energy per second. So we are human. And we also like exactly behave like a light bulb of 100 watts. So it means on average, we're going to lose about 100 joule per second. Question, how come, how come we, we touch each other and we are not burning our hand? Because? So it's the same, same, same energy, same watt. So what's going to be the difference? Mm -hmm. What's the difference? No, 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 no. Same amount of energy. Something is different. The difference. The Mm. Surface area, very good. You see, we have a large surface area. So even though it's the same amount of energy per unit second, it's going to spread out over a larger area. So why do you think like an uh, elephant? See, I know how to make elephant. Look at this. <laughs> huh? I'm not bad, right? Yeah. So why do you think um, elephant have large here to cool to cool off okay to increase the surface area so they can cool off because they live in a hot hot uh, um, climate another thing cool a mouse so a mouse so i don't know how to make a mouse okay i know elephant but not mouse and uh, so a mouse has a large surface area relative to its weight so it's going to lose a lot of heat. So to compensate, it needs to eat all the time. 
So that's why those uh, horrible mice, you know, <laughs> all the time. So that's the story. Okay, let's go back to our business here. Um, so in one day, can you find, so uh, can you find how much energy we are losing in one day? So you have one 100 joules per second. Okay, so one second, 100 joule. And um, how many seconds in one day? Exactly. So it's going to be, uh, yes, yeah, so 100 times 24 times 3600. Is that right? Do you agree? Yes. Can you divide by about 4000 to have that in the uh, food calorie? So the amount of energy lost in one day in food calorie. Huh? 2160. Very, very, very interesting. 2160, who said that? What's your name again? Ma? Yeah. Mariana. Mariana. 2160 food calories. Didn't your professor always said in biology we need on average 2000 food calories per day? About when you are old like me, more 1500. When you are young like you, more like 2000. When you are an athlete, maybe 4000, even more. But on average, why is that? Because we lose energy at a rate of 100 joules per second, which is power. Isn't that interesting? Okay, so a lot of energy packed in food, right? One food calorie is about 4,000 joules. It's very depressing. Okay, and James, what? In the 19th century, at the beginning of the 19th century, it was the Industrial Revolution, so they built those heat engines, and then later on they built the car, and he wanted to, to find a way to make people understand why heat engines were more efficient than horses, because they used to have horses before, so he developed what is called the horsepower. The horsepower is a unit for power. And he did the experiment that a horse is able to lift 33,000 pounds over one foot per minute. So this is called the horsepower, and it's a unit for power. One horsepower is about 746 watts. So if you use a watt, people didn't understand, you know, how, how much more oomph a horse, uh, a car has. So if you have a, a Maserati, for example, maybe it's 200 horsepower. So people could imagine 200 horses, you know, pulling the car. So that will make sense to them. So that was done by James Watt. So I, I know you have to, uh, uh, what's the what's Ferrari? It's Ferrari, uh, horse, horsepower of uh, Ferrari horsepower no that much no De depends on the model yes oh. wow 2023 769 uh, horsepower wow that's a lot oh there is 819 yes wow oh but it's a compet competition but maybe for race racing maybe that's uh, so I, this is my car, 121 horsepower, okay? It's not a Ferrari. It has no punch, no oomph, but uh, yeah, but it, it's okay. Okay, so interestingly, we can produce as much energy as a horse 
um, during a given time, but only during a small amount of time. Okay, so you have to be a very good athlete to be able to go up to one horsepower. You can do it, but only during a short, short time. So here are some examples for power. Uh, you, you need for a small house, you need about one kilowatt. A small car, 100 horsepower, like my car. Uh, electric power uh, for, uh, for a small town, one mega. Mega means one million. So it just gives you ideas. And you see that a solar panel is not very efficient in turning energy from the sun to electricity. So it can be good for a small, small house, but it doesn't work for a, a big city, for example, because from the sun, from the sun, we only get, you take one meter by one meter, you see that square here, you put that square under the sun at the equator, and you will get 1,000 watts. So it's nothing, okay? So it's not very efficient. Gasoline is more efficient. Okay, so shall I uh, keep that for, uh, um, I'm gonna keep that for, uh, pop quiz. Okay, and then there is another equation can be useful. If you are talking about a system acted upon by forces. So for example, here you have an elevator, it's being pulled, okay? So this is from the engine, this is from the motor, and then you have the load. So it means the people inside and the case, and you have some friction. So if it's moving at a constant speed, what can you say? Review for the final, up equals down. So the tension equals up equals down because it's a, a dynamic equilibrium. So it's a moving at a constant speed. So we can say that the tension equals to mg plus f, right? And then we can find if the speed is given, and we don't know how much uh, energy is being used, right? But you have the speed. So we can use that equation instead. The power, the power delivered by a force, so in that case will be the motor uh, the delivering energy, so T, so the power, um, delivered by the motor, so that will be T, it just equals to the force times velocity. You, you can see why, but if you don't want to see why, here is the equation. So the power, okay, from a force acting on a system is just the force times the speed. Okay, do you understand? So here, of course, there is a power delivered by the motor, Okay, so you have T, so you have T. So you want to find the power, so you multiply T by the velocity. Okay? Okay, so do it. So first step, find T, because it's a dynamic equilibrium. So everything up equals everything down, and then you use that equation to find power. Okay, so power is the energy delivered by the engine per second. So yeah, uh, the mass, the mass is, you see, you have to add, the total mass will be 1800 kilograms. So the first thing you want to find T, can you do that? Remember, uh, everything up equals everything down. So up you have T equals friction is 4,000 plus uh, mg, so that will be the total mass times 10. So that's just the review, okay? Up equals down. Are you with me? So 4,000 plus 
800 I believe it's zero and I found 22,000 Newton did you find that yes it's from from last uh, last beginning of the semester yes okay so the power okay of the tension provided by the tension is the tension times the speed so you can see why here you see work work is force times displacement divided by the time force times displacement divided by time is the velocity so just force times velocity it's another equation so it's going to be 22,000 times uh, 3 and what is the unit what 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 is the unit the unit is what Okay, usually, usually we're gonna say 60, um, 60 kilo watt. Okay, so when you buy a fridge or whatever, you're gonna see how much, how much energy it's uh, using per, 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 per second. Okay, so that's, we didn't find that. Did we find that? Oh, yeah, 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 I know, I know, because I use 10. So they found about 65,000. It's because they use scientific notation. Okay, are you with me? And uh, you can convert that in horsepower because in industry, they like to use horsepower. So you divide by uh, 746, something like this, and you get in horsepower. Okay, let's let's do uh, something very, 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 very important because it's to pay your electric uh, bill. And if you want to predict how much something is going to cost you, how much a fridge is going to cost you, how much a microwave is going to cost you, AC, especially AC here. So you have Joule. That's a unit of energy, okay? You have Joule, and Joule, you have power. You see power is in, is what's the unit for power? Watts, and much, and like I'm, I'm gonna cross that out. So, so far we know that power is energy over time. Do you agree? So you have energy equals, power so that's the power power times the time yes so energy is always power times time and power is always energy divided by the time so energy is in joule yes power is in watts watts and time is in seconds so if energy is in joule, the power has to be in watts and the time in second. But joule is a small unit of energy. We don't use that in the real world, like in a electric uh, bill, for example. Instead, we use another unit of energy called the kilowatt hour. It's very simple. Look, you take your energy, and now it's going to be in kilo. Kilo is a thousand. Kilo watt, kilowatt, a thousand watt hour. So let me ask you something. So in that case, power, it's going to be in what? What's going to be the unit of power in that case? Kilowatt, very good. And the time will be in hour. Very simple. Okay? So if you want to have the energy in kilowatt hour, you take the power in kilowatt, you multiply the time in hour. So that way, if you run, for example, Airbnb and you have an AC unit, you can find how much it's going to cost at the end of the month, right? So it's very useful. So microwave consume a lot of energy. So 800 watts. So that will be the power. And let's say you run it for two hours. 
Okay, so what's going to be the energy in kilowatt hour? So the power, you want that in a kilowatt. And here you have 800 watts. So 800 watts is how much in kilowatt? Could you just divide by 1,000? Divide by the 1,000, right? So 800 watts is 0 0.8 kilowatts. Do you all agree? Okay. So to have kilowatt hour, okay, I need my power in kilowatt and the time in hour. So it's going to be 0 0.8, yes, 60. times 60. how many hours? How many hours? Just two? Is that right? No. No. You got to be 120 times 120. Times 120. Why times time? No, you run for two hours. So a kilowatt and hours. At the end, at the end of the, uh, just for two hours. So how much is that? 1.6 kilowatt hour, right? Right, so if you want the energy in kilowatt hour, the power has to be in kilowatt and the time in hours. So all you have to do is to multiply uh, 0 0.8 times 2, so 1.6 kilowatt hour. And then you look Google and you ask, okay, how much is it in Miami uh, for kilowatt hour? I don't think it's 10 cents. I, I think it's a little bit more than 10 cents, but let's say it's 10 cents. Because 800 watt is 0 0.8 kilowatt. Okay, so one kilowatt is a thousand watts. Okay, so 800 watt is question mark, you divide by a thousand. So, first thing you have to convert in kilowatt, yes? So, how much money are you going to pay? How many cents? 60 cents, it's very cheap. It's dirt cheap. Electricity, if you use new, if you use uh, fossil fuel, it's very cheap. It's 10 cents in Florida. One kilowatt hour is 16 cents. Ah, I was looking for that. Thank you. So in Florida, uh, one kilowatt hour? Yeah, it's 16 cents. It's 16 cents. So instead of multiplying by 10, you multiply by 16. Is that clear? Oh, wait, New York City. Oh, New York City. Wait, wait, we're gonna see that. New York, no, Alaska is worse. Alaska, uh, New York City, kilowatt hour. 22. 22. Aren't you glad you live in Miami? Let, let's look at Alaska. 23.4. Oh, you're faster than me. 23.4. I think it's the highest rate is Alaska. <laughs> okay, so I, uh, I'm i going to let you solve the next one to make sure that everyone is on board because that way, you know, if you have to buy this expensive fridge and they claim that it's energy efficient, so you can do the computation. How long do you have to keep that fridge to, to start saving money. Okay, so you, there are all kinds of uh, computation you do. Okay, so do this one, you help each other. Help each other. AC, AC consumer load of energy. AC, air dryer, microwave. So it's already it's already in kilowatts, so you don't have to do anything. So you don't have to divide by a thousand power is kilowatt. Three hours per day for thirty days. So for how long it's gonna be three times thirty, is that right? Do 
Can I do a mistake? No? Okay. So energy in kilowatt hour equals power in kilowatt times the time in hours. Okay, so it's going to be 50 times 90. 15 times 90, uh, 1350. And if you look at your electric bill, that's that's why they're going to charge. You're going to charge for how much, how many kilowatt hour you have used in a month or every three months. So it's nothing. What what costs you is the the fee they add. Is that right? And then they say one kilowatt hour is eleven cents. So zero point eleven dollars. So eleven cents. So thirteen fifty. You multiply. Oh yeah, one one dollar and fifty cents, and I'm sure they're gonna round to one fifty. Okay, so it's useful because let's see, you want to know how long, how much it's gonna cost you for the AC. You can do the computation now, right? It's sixty cents per kilowatt hour in Miami. So at least something useful that you learn in physics. Um, yes. It's Hawaii with 44 cents. Hawaii? How much? 30? 34? Mm -hmm. Wow, 34 cents. So it's like double. It's double what we pay. 34 cents. I'm sure it must be uh, 30 or 40. Oh, 44. Wow. Hawaii, 44 cents. Wow. Per kilowatt hour and Miami is 16. Okay, so much better here. And I guess it's it's hot in Hawaii, you know. Okay, so that's I keep that for a pop quiz. Okay, interesting here. It's it comes from the book, so the book is very interesting. If uh, if you want to have a summer reading or a winter break reading, it's called Physics for Future Presidents. Okay, or it's also called sometimes uh, uh, Physics uh, Behind the Headlines. Richard Muller. It's very interesting, and and in that book you they compare all the energy content uh, relative to TNT. I think we already discussed that, no? So, if, for example, if you take one mass of TNT for the same amount of mass, ooh, isn't that surprising? In the same mass, you, you take mass of chocolate cookie, mass of TNT, you're going to have more energy in chocolate cookies that you have in the TNT, the potential energy to be delivered. So when I, I take chocolate cookie, it's the metabolism, and it turns out in ATP. If I have a TNT, it's the explosion. But it will be the same energy. It will be energy. It doesn't matter where it comes from. Energy is energy. But you have eight times more energy from chocolate cookies than from TNT. So how come if I eat eight cookies, I'm not going to go in a boom? Um, there is no explosion. What will be the difference? The type of energy. The, 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 the type. So it's not really the type. It's the way energy is uh, delivered. What, 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 that, what will be the difference? When you eat a cookie, is it right away? Your metabolism turned out into energy? Sorry. No. But TNT? instantaneous right so it's the time it's the time so it's it's kind of the light bulb right so it means in that case the light bulb it was the surface area here it's the time so uh, tnt of course is going to do more damage because during a small amount of uh, of time the force of impact will be huge do you remember when we talk about impulse 
So for the same amount of energy, if you have a small, small time, big force of impact, but if you have a large time, the force of impact will be small, okay? So it's like the airbag. So that's surprising. Uh, that will be the meteorite that killed the dinosaur. And you see, it has a huge amount of energy delivered to Earth 65 million years ago. That was one, you said, 100 million megaton of TNT, the meteorite that killed the dinosaur 10 kilometers across. 100 million t uh, megaton of TNT, one hydrogen bomb. One hydrogen bomb is one megaton. And we are talking about 100 million edge bomb drop on the earth. Everything die. Everything is wiped out. The earth comes to a broil, right? So it's getting very hot. Everything is destroyed, except that the little mice, you know, hiding. But all the dinosaurs dead. And that's because of kinetic energy. I told you that kinetic energy is deadly. All that kinetic energy from the meteorite turned into destroying, doing a lot of damage. Another thing interesting is like if, uh, if you compare the energy in electric car, so in the battery, to the energy from fossil fuel, you have more energy in fossil fuel than you have in a battery typical battery that you have in an electric car, you see the ratio is, is more than 100. So not very efficient, the electric car. Gasoline was more efficient. So interesting. So these, these are units for energy. These are units for power. Usually it's watt. So if you use watt, you need to use joule and second. Or it could be horsepower. One horsepower is 746 watt, and so forth, and so on. Okay, shall we do problem or you go? Oh, I said number three. Okay, let's let's do number three because it's a review. So work done by something on something else equals force times distance or uh, displacement. This has to be parallel. So Jim exerts a force of 500 Newton and the desk does not move. So what's gonna be the work done? Zero, very good. I'm trying to trick you. There is no work done on the desk by Jim. Jim is doing work on the environment. The air molecules moving faster, but not on the desk. What about here? What will be the work done? Eight, that's it, 800 joule. And this one is? So 200 Newton, four meters is for uh, same thing. Okay, so you can apply a small force over a large distance or a big force over a small distance. So there is a trade-off between force and distance. Okay, so that's not hard. So do we need to do the same amount of work? Yes, the, the same amount of work for the second. And the first is zero. Okay, let's do number two, like to review. So you have different way to do it. So 20 Newton means what? It's 
It means two kilograms height. So this one has more inertia, but more weight. This one has less inertia and less weight. So remember, uh, Galileo said they're going to hit the ground at the same time. OK? So you can take, you can use the conservation of energy, or you can use kinematics. Right? Are you doing it? We're doing something else. I see people doing something else. Don't do something. It doesn't matter because I only know a few students, so I cannot. I don't know your name. It's fine. So potential energy here is going to be m g times ten e equals zero point five m v squared. So the mass cancel out as expected, and you still have that same equation again to g h. Okay. So that's going to be 2200, uh, square root of 200. It's going to be 40. OK. OK, so the speed is the same. However, however, the, how do I get what? Uh, uh, G is 10, so 2 times 100. However, you see, it's, it's not going to be the same when they're going to hit the ground. So this one is 2 kilogram, this one is 4 kilogram, and both of them has a speed of 14. That will be the speed. Okay, the change of momentum for the two kilogram, how much is going to be? Change in momentum. Okay, remember change means final minus initial. So it's going to be the final momentum minus initial momentum. So it's going to be the mass, final velocity minus initial velocity, right? So the mass is two. What's the final velocity is going to be? Zero minus 14. Okay, so the change in momentum for the two kilogram is going to be minus 28. And that's going to be the impulse. Okay, impulse. Because if it stops moving, it's because there is a force applied over a time. So there is a force here. You hit the ground, the ground is going to hit you back. So there is an impulse. Now for the four kilogram, you're gonna have the change in momentum will be uh, four times minus 14. Do you get that? Huh? Yes? Okay, so now you understand if you drop a mouse, it's going to survive. If you drop an elephant, maybe it won't survive because you see, even though the speed is the same, the change in momentum is not the same. And the change in momentum is the impulse. So it's not the fall that kills, is the impact. Okay, so I, I have a gecko. And sometimes it just drops on the floor because she always wants to go on the floor. And she's fine because she has such a light weight, it, she will be fine. Mm -hmm. But if you, you have uh, something heavier, you know, dropping on the floor, not fine. So it depends on the mass. Okay, so conclusion, it's not the fall that kills, is the... It's 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 the landing. It's the landing. Okay. Now uh, about escape speed. So on Earth, okay, we are bound to 
to uh, Earth because of gravity, right? So it's like you have an invisible spring. Okay, so if you want to jump, the spring is going to bring you back. So gravity is like a restoring force. If you want to break free, you need to have enough ki kinetic energy. Very good. Okay, so if you have the right amount of kinetic energy, then you can escape Earth and very far you away. You are not moving and you won't have gravitational uh, energy. And you see the escape speed for Earth is about seven miles per second. So anything that you give enough kinetic energy, so it can reach seven miles per second, it can escape Earth. So this is called the escape speed. Okay, so I refer you to your um, book. Oh, you know, you know that you, you are supposed to open your book. Do you know that? It's good. Open the book, do the solve problem. And there is a nice simulation here. I don't know, I'm looking at the time. following an ellipse, it's just a circular motion, like the Earth around, around the Sun, but you see, they are bound together. Oh, it's very annoying. So, helicomet is going to speed up, slow down, speed up. So, what kind of energy does it have here? Kinetic. Kinetic will be the larger. And here, Kinetic decreases, so what is hard potential? So you see the total amount of energy will stay the same. It's swinging back and forth between kinetic and potential. Kinetic goes down, uh, kinetic goes up, potential goes down, kinetic goes down, potential goes up. Is that clear? So you can escape, it's possible, you see? I will show you maybe next time, but you, you can, you do, you can escape. If you go fast enough, you don't catch me, bye bye. You see, you need to have enough speed to do that. Okay, do, do you see a pop quiz?